السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, we commence in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah to bless them, to bless every one of us and to grant us every form of goodness. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, who is Allah and why should we be worshipping him? You know, I am on earth. I have a brain, I have eyes, I have ears, I have hands, I have limbs, I have feelings, I have relatives, I have so much, I earn, I spend, and guess what? At the end of it, I die. May Allah grant us all rahma and maghfira, the mercy and forgiveness, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of us. So I was made by a supreme deity. Someone made me, and this is what makes a believer. So the believers believe that someone made them. They didn't just appear or they didn't just come about from nothing. And this is what believers believe because we are so sophisticated, it's impossible for us to just appear somewhere. I mean, if I were to tell you that something has just popped up in your backyard and it's a sophisticated electronic gadget and it just came from nowhere, you would think I was crazy. Someone has to have put it there. It must have come there somehow. There is an explanation. So in a similar way, we are more sophisticated than any gadgets. I mean, if one limb or organ fails, may Allah protect us, we would need a lot of help to try and um, you know, alleviate the pain or the suffering that is caused as a result of that organ having failed. May Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. So someone made me. Now, once I realize that, okay, someone has made me and I believe that there is a supreme deity who made me, the question arises, who made me? So, is it another person who looks just like me? The answer is no, because there are millions of others, billions of others who look just like me, who cannot make someone just like me. They've never done it, they cannot do it right now, and they're not going to do it in the future. And evidence of it is, as time passes, we're learning more and more about humankind, and that's Allah's plan. Allah says, we will show you more as time passes, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ Allah says, we will continue showing them signs in the horizons, meaning in the creation of Allah, as well as within themselves, until it is proven beyond doubt to them that it is the truth. And according to the uh, books of explanation of the Quran, the term it here is referring to the Quran itself, the revelation. The revelation is the truth. It has come to you with a lot and Allah will prove it as time passes that each and everything that he taught you is actually the truth. Sometimes you might have science proving something contradictory for a while and after a decade or, or more or a century or more or less, science will just apologize because it has a new finding and that new finding will then be in conformance to what was revealed. So Allah says, we're going to show this to you as time passes. That's not my topic today, but going back to who made me. So. Number one is, I have to admit, someone made me. Number two is, he cannot be like me. It's not like me because time has passed. Millions and billions have been on earth and they have advanced. And with their advancement, every year we are more and more, you know, well acquainted with our bodies, our limbs and so on, more and more findings. So we are progressing, we are advancing. With that advancement, nobody has created a human being, subhanAllah, exactly as we are. So I know that it's not someone like me and because I'm the most sophisticated of the creation at the moment, uh, you know, I believe in the Quran. So I am going to tell you, the Quran says, you, O man, 
have been created, created in the best of postures. Allah says, we created you in the best of postures. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Indeed, we have created man in Ahsan, meaning the best of Taqweem, your postures. You know, the way you stand, the way you sit, the way you hold, the way you see, the exact positioning of all your limbs and organs. Allah says, the best. The best from what? From all other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, pause for a moment because I want to prove that to you to begin with. Think for a while of any limb or organ of yours, do you think it could be in another place besides where exactly it is? Take a look at your five fingers. These five fingers, exactly where they are, you know, the index finger, the thumb, if you had to change anything, you would never be able to compete with what is already there. Take a look at your eyes. Where do you want to put them? Your ears. Take a look at your lips, your teeth, your mouth, your tongue, your everything. Subhanallah, where would you like to put it? Allah says, we put it in the best possible place for you. We created you, Allah says, and we created you in such an amazing way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. Okay. Now, unfortunately, there are people who don't believe at all. They say, no, 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 there's no creator, there's no maker, there's nothing happening like this, you know, subhanallah. Well, we're saying, did this just come about or just like that, you know? We're too sophisticated not to have had a maker. That maker, we believe, uh, we is not like us. Now, he is a supreme deity. I haven't seen him. You haven't seen him. So people say, how do you believe in things you haven't seen? Well, the coronavirus has made it quite easy for us to understand that, look, we, we didn't see it initially and we still cannot see it with the naked eye, but it requires something before you can actually see it. But you know it's there. So with Allah, his signs are there and you can actually feel and see his signs. But to see him, we will see him after death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best possible day being the day that we meet with him. I, for one, am very excited of the day that I'm going to be meeting my maker. Subhanallah. Imagine meeting he who made you and made creation. How beautiful that day is going to be when you know his names and his qualities. And I'm going to get to that, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe this deity who made us, there is a supreme deity. And because he made us, we owe him everything he wants from us. We owe it to him because we are so helpless, we're going to return to him. So helpless. You know, the wealthiest of all has to return to Allah, has, has died and will die. The most handsome, the most amazing, the most intelligent, they're gone or they're going to go, subhanallah. Have you thought of how weak man is? You're going to live here on average 60 to 70 years, not more. The average has never been more than 60, 70 years globally. So you've come onto this earth. Really, do you really think that, you know, a man... Uh, as sophisticated as he is, would just come onto this earth for a few years and then disappear into thin air, leaving behind loved ones, leaving behind every belonging of yours, uh, you know, whatever you enjoyed, everything that was there. And you saw yourself, you saw yourself grow from weakness to strength and then from strength back to weakness. You saw it happen. Do you really think that that's it? That, you know, I was here for nothing, you know, just to uh, enjoy and that's it. You know, do what you like. No, my brothers and sisters, we're believers. Someone made us and guess what? We're going to return to the same someone. Subhanallah. So who is he? He is the maker known as Al-Khaliq. No one can deny. If I believe I'm made by someone, then I should believe that that someone is the maker. What did he make? Well, he made me and he made entire creation. He is the creator, Al-Khaliq. And when I came onto the earth, that same maker made me give value to things that I found on earth. When I came here, I was naked. I was not clothed. 
they made something called clothes. Who made it? A people. From what? From something that that maker had placed on earth. So whether it is cotton from the farms or whether it is leather from the skins and hides of the animals, whatever else it may be, that maker is the one who had left or uh, caused the creation of all of that on earth. And we as human beings then gave it value. He gave us the mind and understanding indeed to be able to transform some of his creation to something which will benefit us. Anything you have, you found it on earth. Anything, anything of value, you found it on earth and you're going to leave it on earth. That's what it is. Think about it for a moment. Whatever I have, the most beautiful of my belongings, things that make me so happy, you know, the fur, the blankets, the beddings, the houses, the paint, the colors, uh, the cars, the handbags, the perfumes, the scents, the smell, every single thing that you have and you, you believe has value, you found it on earth. Allah says, we haven't yet shown you what we've created besides a droplet. You're still going to go into the heavens and we're going to show you a little bit more as time passes. Notice how they're discovering planets and galaxies and so much more beyond what we ever knew. And most of these are way beyond the size of the entire earth. Most of these are way beyond the size of the entire earth. And there are millions, if not billions of these planets and stars and whatever else we have. Subhanallah, I feel so small when I think of the closest star being four and a half light years away from me. Which means at night, when you look at a star, that star was there four and a half years ago and it took four and a half years for the light to travel from the star to you on earth. So it may not be there anymore. It could have been a fallen star that fell four and a half years back. When you see a star falling, it's actually four and a half years back that that star fell, but the light was traveling at the speed of light for four and a half years before it got to you. And then you saw it and you think, wow, well, you're a big deal. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Or more than four and a half because four and a half is the closest star. Four and a half light years away. La ilaha illallah. So someone made the stars and the moon and someone made the earth. Someone made the heavens. Subhanallah. Many places in the Quran, Allah Almighty makes mention of the fact that he created the seven heavens, the seven skies. How? I don't know. But he's made them. And I know every time we find out certain things, that's just the earth and the atmosphere around it. And a few of these planets, we haven't yet gone beyond that. So imagine the greatness of Allah. So when you say, who is Allah? He's my maker and the maker of absolutely everything. So now, why do I call him Allah? The true answer is he called himself Allah. Allah is the name of the maker, the creator. The maker and the creator. Now, we call him the nourisher and the cherisher, the provider, the sustainer, the protector, the curer. Provider, protector, nourisher, sustainer, because everything we have, we found it here. Nobody actually put it here besides he who made myself an entire creation. Allah الذي خلقكم It is Allah who created you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about صوركم He gave you your uh, surah. He gave you your image. He gave, he fashioned you. And he gave you your face, your identity. Amazing, amazing. So Allah is the one who made all of us. He is the sustainer, the provider. The, he is the one who has provided all of these things for me. I mean, those of you who are a vegan, for example, it's Allah who provided all of that. You found it on earth. You didn't bring it with you and you will leave and you won't take it with you either. Subhanallah. And so it will stay on earth. Anything that has value was given value by humankind based on the value that was given by Allah. So we consider gold very, very valuable. What is gold? Have you thought about it? It's actually the dust of the earth. What is glass? 
Glass is the sand of the earth. What is silver? It is mined in a similar way. What is, what are diamonds? Subhanallah. Have you thought of it? This carbon and subhanallah, so much that we have, we mine it and we get so happy, the granite and whatever else is there. We get so excited, but Allah says on earth, you cannot use it for more than just a few years. When you came here, you didn't speak. And so we created you in such a way that within a short span, you were taught how to do certain things. And at a certain point, you matured, you had your own brain, you must begin to ask questions and you must try and find serious answers. Who made me and why am I here? So let's go back to that. Someone made you. Now, if he made you, he made you for a purpose. What was the purpose? Well, we will never have an answer except from revelation. I can't just see people come in, spend a few years and go. Some come in and go in a short span of time and some live a little bit longer. I can't just see people come, do as they please and leave. I can't just see people come and some of them don't do as they please. They are disciplined and then they leave. So all of this, subhanAllah, if I were to look at it, there must be a purpose. He who made me couldn't have left me without anything. He has to have taught me something. Why did he make me? So he says he wanted to create a, crea a creation or a creature, humankind, a creature that was neither an angel nor a devil. Subhanallah. I believe they're angels. Okay. Angels, they don't disobey the Almighty at all. They do whatever they are told. They don't have the capacity to disobey and they're completely sin free. Those are the angels, one hand. And the other hand, there is Satan, the devil. So this devil, he is arrogant. He has denied Allah, knowing Allah. He knew Allah and he, he is arrogant. That arrogance had, has led him to denial. He won't worship Allah and he won't listen. And that's the devil. Okay. Allah has control over him, but Allah has left it for a purpose. He's left it for a purpose. He has these two on either side. One actually insults the Almighty, belittles the Almighty and uh, has this arrogance. This is why we're always taught to protect ourselves from arrogance. So. He defies the maker in everything. And on the other hand, you have total obedience. So Allah says, in the middle, we made humankind and we want to reward humankind. We, it's Allah. Allah enjoys this. He wanted it. He loved it. And he, he loves to see us. And all these words are used in the Quran, you know, that Allah loves and Allah wanted and Allah did this and so on. And not just in the Quran, but revelation before the Quran that was from heaven, subhanallah. So Allah Almighty says, I created humankind. Humankind will come on the earth and their parents, the parents, you know, the first human was created from dust and soil and made. And after that, Allah created a reproductive system that worked. And then the rest of us were created through that reproductive system, obviously, Eve or Hawa, may peace be upon her, was created a little bit differently. And Jesus, may peace be upon him, was also created a little bit differently. Besides those three, Adam, Eve and Jesus, the rest of us are created through male and female. So Adam, no male, no female. Eve, through male, without the involvement of a female. Jesus, through female, without the involvement of a male. Subhanallah. That was the decree of the Almighty, the words of the Almighty, the, the power of the Almighty, Allah. And the rest of us through male and female. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, your parents, it's their duty to give you a good name and to give you a decent upbringing. They would clothe you initially and they will have to take care of you as part of their test. So Allah has created us here to test us. We will definitely test all of you. That's what Allah says. So he created us to test us. With what? Jur, hunger, khawf, fear, naqs min al amwal, loss of wealth, wal anfus, loss of lives, loss of produce. And Allah says, bear patience, bear patience, keep worshipping me. When I give you, worship me. When I take away from you, worship me, bear patience. And you'll get back to me very soon. 
like later today. May Allah grant us a good return to him. Amen. There we go, my brothers and sisters. Amazing. So, uh, Allah says, I created you to test you. In Surah Al-Ankabut, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Does man think that it's sufficient for him to say, uh, we believe, and then he's not tested? Allah says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا we have indeed tested them before you. Before, before man, before us. Allah says, we tested all of the people. I mean, before this Quran was revealed at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says, even before you, we tested everyone. In order to distinguish between who is really truthful and who is a liar. Subhanallah. One might wonder, what was the truth and the lie? Well, Allah says, before we created you, we created within you a fitra, a nature. Naturally, you would think and you would come back to believing there is a deity. Someone made me when I die, I cannot just disappear into thin air. I have to go back to he who made me and I'm going to give my record of deeds. I'm going to say how I did and so on. You know, you go out in the morning from your house, you come back in the evening and your parents ask you, how was your day? And what did you do? And why did you do this? And why didn't you do that? And well done for this and that. Well, Allah's example is far higher. He released you into the earth. And when you go back, he's going to say, what did you do? And how did you do it? Did you worship me? Did you remember me? Because Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدِنَا أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ Amazing verse. Allah says, do you know, do you remember the time when we removed all of the souls from the back of Adam alayhi salam and all of you were there and we asked you, who is your Lord? Am I not your Lord? And you all answered, yes, you are. And Allah says, don't forget this. You don't come back on the day of Qiyamah and judgment and say, I don't remember and I don't know. And guess what? We don't remember. But fitra and the nature makes us go back to it, ask questions. So don't take risks when it comes to worship. Who should you worship? Don't worship a human who looks like you because you're risking it. If they look like you, chances are they cannot be your maker. Ibrahim alayhi salam went through this process. He looked at the sun. He thought about it. He said, no, can't be. He looked at the moon. He thought about it. He said, no, can't be. He looked at the stars. He thought about them. No, can't be. He says, whoever created the stars and the moon and the sun, I worship him alone. The one who created fatara, as samawati wal arda, the one who created the heavens and the earth, he is the one I turn my face towards. And that's it, which means I dedicate all acts of worship only and solely to him and to nobody else. And that's the entire test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we're going to test you. With what? وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they obey me, they worship me. They understand my instruction to them. What was the instruction? Allah says, don't worship anyone besides me. That's it. Worship your maker. Any act of worship you ever render, only render it to he who made you. So what do I call him? He calls himself Allah. So what is the meaning of the term Allah? Some of the scholars have gone into it and they have mentioned a few opinions. One of them is Allah is actually the worshipped one, al maluhu the worshipped one. And we refer to him as the worshipped one because he alone deserves worship. The only deity, the only one who deserves worship is he who made me. I cannot worship someone else or something else that is also going to come to an end simply because it's a little bit more powerful than I am. I worship the all powerful. That's it. Not others who might have a little bit of power that is temporary. No. He whom I'm going to go to. So if I say, oh, you who made me, I worship you alone. I haven't taken any risks whatsoever because the day I die, I'm going to go back to him. 
who made me. And he will know, oh, you worshipped he who made you. That was very intelligent of you. Very intelligent. So the most intelligent from amongst us are those who declare that they worship their maker alone and they seek from the one whom they are going to return to that he has mercy upon them when they return to him. So I say, oh, you who made me. Have mercy upon me. O you who made me, I worship you alone. I will put my head on the ground for you and declare your greatness because you made me. So don't take risks. Allah says, just call me Allah. You know, in Hebrew, they use the term Elohim or Eloha. Similar meaning. And it's also the one supreme deity. When the Jewish people say, we worship the one supreme maker and deity, they're talking about Allah. And yes, we differ with them in certain things and matters, but regarding the concept of Godhood, the similarities are probably more than all other faiths between Judaism and Islam. So we say Allah, the one who made us, no, and he sent to us from the very beginning messages, manuscripts, messengers. He sent to us so many and proof of it is, look, we have uh, major religions on earth today, the major religions, the vast majority, the bulk, the billions, subhanallah, you have Jews, Christians and Muslims. Those are in the majority, right? So you look at them, all of their teachings are taken from the same source. There are so many similarities between them. Yes, there are differences, but there are so many similarities and you will find that those teachings are interconnected. Subhanallah, there has to be some source. The Muslims respect and honor and believe in Jesus, may peace be upon him, Moses, may peace be upon him, and all the others that they have mentioned in the Old Testament, and all of those that the, the Christians believe in, as well as the Jews. And the Muslims believe in Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, are actually just an extension of the teachings of Jesus and the others. And Allah says, we have sent you to confirm what the others have brought. And it's a fact because look at it on the ground. Yes, as much as we may not in some instances even get along well, but we still believe things that are very, very similar. SubhanAllah, it goes to show there is some truth in it. And I believe there is absolute truth in the fact that the one who made me is the only one who is owed worship. No one else, none else. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So who is he? Well, he asks us to concentrate more on the names and qualities of his. In his qualities, he has the qualities of Kamal, the qualities of perfection. No one is similar to Allah in any way, shape or form. No one, no one, no one, nothing. So I believe whatever Allah has said about himself to be true. And I stop there because I, my mind cannot go beyond it and I will not deny it because he mentioned it. So I stop exactly there. If Allah says something, I believe that. His names and his qualities, that's exactly what I believe. Whatever he has said in revelation and whatever the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has declared in revelation that is authentic, I take it and I stop exactly there. And I believe in his qualities. Take a look at this. The most merciful, the most kind, the most compassionate, the one in control, the one, the curer, the sustainer, the nourisher, the provider, the protector, the, 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 the one who is uh, the greatest and so on. So many of these qualities. So Allah says, when you understand my names, my qualities, and you believe in them and you put them into practice, you deserve paradise. Now you know who made you. That's all. I came onto the earth. I recognize my maker. And that's why Allah's given us maturity when you start asking questions. Notice teenagers don't really get along so much with their parents sometimes because they start asking questions because they want to live uh, knowing that what they're doing is makes the most sense to them. And they need to continue questioning because sometimes what makes sense to a mind that is contaminated is actually not the truth. So your mind needs to be uncontaminated or you need to try and clean your mind and from, from the contaminations. So your belief would be pure, pure. You'd be thinking with a pure mind. And that's why I keep asking Allah to guide you. We say, المستقيم, guide us to the straight path more than 17 times a day in prayer. Guide us to the straight path because that guidance is by far the most important thing that you would ever, ever be able to achieve. If Allah's guided you, he's given you everything. And if you're misguided, even if you have material items, you've got nothing. 
Subhanallah, because it's very temporary. People build their houses on earth and they're worried about their salaries and jobs. Mashallah, it's important. But if you're doing that at the stake of your hereafter, you've lost everything. Subhanallah. So Allah says, these names and qualities, when you know them and you understand them and you know who I am and you worship me alone, you deserve Jannah, paradise. That's why the hadith says 99 of the names of Allah, if you were to memorize them, understand them, put them into practice, man ahsaha aw hafidhaha, dakhala al jannah, they will enter paradise. And this is why Allah tells us, you know, have a good thought about Allah. Have a good perception about Allah. He is forgiving. He is kind. He is merciful. We are human. Many of us uh, struggle because we forget that we're just human beings. You want to be an angel. You're not going to be able to be. But don't be a devil. Just be a human. What, what, what does that mean? I know the do's and don'ts and I will try my best to fulfill the do's and stay away from the don'ts. And I will keep seeking the forgiveness of Allah because I'm just a human. There are some strong desires within my system and sometimes I may fall for these. But I'm not falling like the devil fell out of defiance. I'm falling out of my weakness. So I ask Allah's forgiveness. Allah says, mm, that's why we made you to seek forgiveness. Imagine Adam alayhi salam and this makes me smile every time I think of it. Allah prohibited upon them only one thing when they were created. Don't eat from this tree. Don't eat from this tree. That's exactly what they did. That's exactly, that's the only thing they did, subhanAllah. Mm. Allah said, don't do this. And that's what they did. But did they do it out of defiance or out of weakness? Out of human weakness and the deception of the devil. So whenever you sin, if you've sinned out of human weakness and the deception of the devil, quickly seek the forgiveness of Allah. No matter how many times it happens, seek the forgiveness, come back on track, be strong and be hard on yourself to get back to worship Allah alone and do what pleases Allah. And inshallah, you're on the right track. You, you're heading for Jannah, for paradise. Look at the Quran. Allah speaks about those who committed adultery, those who did bad things, immoral things. Allah says, if they remember Allah and seek forgiveness and change their ways, those are the ones whom we will grant paradise, Allah says. For them, from their Lord will be forgiveness and paradise. Who are they? Those who committed immorality or did something evil, wronged themselves, and then sought the forgiveness of Allah. Here is Allah saying, you know what? We will forgive them because they changed their ways. So remember you're a human. This is Allah. Who is Allah? My maker, the one whom I'm going to return to, the only one who is the supreme deity alone, who is owed worship. None other than him is owed worship. So this is why we say, why is Allah the only one worthy of worship? Because he made me. I'm going to go back to him. I mean, I'm going to die. When I die, where, did, where do I go? Okay, so from, you know, from a probabilities perspective of the people of the earth, when they talk, they will tell you, some might say you're going to be reincarnated into a fly or into a snake or a bird. Some might say you're going to uh, just fizzle out into thin air. Some might say you're just returned to nature. Some might say, you know what we believe? Well, we're too sophisticated, too sophisticated to just let that happen to us. My loved ones, my people, you, all of you guys, me, I want to meet you guys. I want to see everyone. I want to have more time, all this, all these restrictions and everything that's finite. I want it to become infinite. And so where was I before I was born? I'm so weak that I don't even know where I was before I was born, had it not been for revelation to explain to me. Nobody, no amount of science can ever tell you where you were before you were born completely. They might say, at a certain point, they might say, well, you were in the form of semen or an egg or a little bit of a whatever in, your, in the loins of your, your forefathers. What about the beginning of man? They can't even go back and trace that at times. Subhanallah. You ask them, how old is the earth? And they'll tell you a few million years. I heard someone say 20 million. I heard someone say 200 million. It's just calling shots. Subhanallah. Say 12 million. And I say, well, for 12 million years, man has just progressed and progressed and progressed. And in the last few hundred years, in the last 100 years, man has technologically advanced like never before. But still, man cannot answer certain questions. Person dies. Where do they go? Where do they go? 
Don't take risks. My brothers and sisters, no risks involved. I worship my maker, him alone. Oh, you who made me, I worship you. I put my head on the ground for you. I stay away from bad things. So Allah has prohibited things, intoxicants prohibited because he wants you to use your brain. That's it. That is it. Had, had intoxicants not covered your brain and, and made you, uh, you know, uh, not be able to think properly and do things properly, Allah would never have prohibited it. Not at all. Evidence of that is there will be uh, wines in heaven that will be non-intoxicating. And the term wine initially in the English language refers to pure extract of uh, fruits and so on. You know, that fruit juice, it used to be called wines. When they say uh, so-and-so drank wine in the scriptures, they're not talking of intoxication. They're talking of the purest of fruit blends. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. May Allah bless us with those uh, juices and, and blends and uh, extracts of the fruits in Jannah and in this dunya in a beautiful way, non-intoxicating. So Allah says, something is bad for you. I have told you it's bad for you and I don't want you to do it. So whatever Allah has prohibited, it's not good for you. Whether you understand it or not, when Allah says dress in a certain way, if you don't, there will be repercussions. What they will be, People may have the courage to talk about or may not have the courage to talk about. Because in actual fact, when we look at the freedom on the world or on the globe today, some people say that we're not actually free to say what we want. We're only free to say what is acceptable to others. That's meaning that's what some people say. That you can't just say what you want because you'll be in trouble. Allahu Akbar, is that true? Subhanallah. Well, some people have the courage to tell you when you don't dress appropriately, this is what happens. There is a psychological impact. There is an impact here. There is a loss of respect. There is whatever, whatever. And others will say, go to hell. You're talking nonsense. Well, we're facing it. In the last few years, in the last decades, we're seeing things and results. You can go and study. You can go and have a peep at what's going on. Subhanallah. Where are people losing it completely? Allah says, when you lose me, you will lose yourself. Subhanallah. So, when the rules and regulations are set by Allah, I promise you they're only set in order for us to be able to live the best of lives and succeed in this world and the next. That's Allah. So this is what makes it unique. And this is why I say I will worship Allah alone. His names, his qualities are unique. No one is, can be similar to Allah in any way. Nothing at all. He is all hearing, he is all seeing, he, he is just and he will serve the justice. People get away with things on earth. It's not going to be forever. They're going to face the justice one day. My brothers and sisters, it's an amazing topic. Who is Allah? Why is he worthy of worship? He's worthy of worship because he made me and I'm going to go back to him. When I go back to him, subhanAllah. It's just going to be one of those amazing days, you know, when you, before you were born, you were in the womb of your mother. And I always love giving this example. As you come onto the earth, you never ever remember what it was like there in the womb of your mother. But if you knew how tight it became and how difficult and small it became in the womb, and then suddenly you crossed a membrane and you were in a place you never believed existed. It was so different and there was just a membrane between you and what we know today as life. Well, in a similar way, you're going to cross through sakarat or the pangs of death and you cross through a small membrane again where your soul departs the body and you will then float into something known as al-barzakh. It is, a, it is a, a certain place that Allah's kept as a transition between this life and the day of judgment. Subhanallah. And we will float straight through that and go in such an amazing, unique way. I can't wait for that day. Subhanallah. Try your best. Seek forgiveness of Allah and have hope in the mercy of Allah. Better your ways and habits. Try and understand revelation. When Allah says do something or don't do something, ask yourself, why is this? Uh, not, not because I'm defying Allah. Just if I understand this, it's, it's much better. There is always an explanation. But even if you don't understand it, remember, Allah knows better than you. You know, when your mom tells you, don't play with the knife, but you enjoy it. It's silver. It looks nice. You're going to cut yourself. And then when you cut yourself, your mom says, didn't I tell you? 
Well, Allah's example is higher. Allah says, don't do this and don't do that. When Allah's prohibited adultery and fornication, He's prohibited sexual misconduct. He's prohibited immorality and evil bad words. He's prohibited worshipping anyone or anything besides Him. He's prohibited insulting others. He wants you to be just and fair. He wants you to be uh, disciplined, completely disciplined. He wants you to pray, to get up at a certain time, to sleep at a certain time. May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. And sincerely, sometimes we actually make mistakes and we do wrong intentionally or unintentionally, but not out of defiance of Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us and grant us goodness. I hope these few words have actually motivated us in our worship of Allah alone and in learning a little bit more and in obeying the instruction of Allah. May Allah bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.